tonight on Thrill of a Lifetime. A project manager hits the big time and sings the national anthem in the Sky Dome. And a woman is reunited with the hero who once saved her life 40 years ago. Oh, thank you so much. I wouldn't even be here without you. Meet Geraldine Hanif, a woman who considers herself to be very lucky in life. Would you like some milk with your tea? It all goes back to when she was just a little girl. Hi, thrill of a lifetime. My greatest thrill would be if you could find the boy who saved my life more than 40 years ago. I would really like to thank him and let him know how blessed my life is. When I was a girl of, I guess, seven years old or about that, um, my family went swimming at this narrow river where they had this very deep hole. And when it was time to go, my father went to get the car. My older brothers were still playing further on, and there were other boys who were there as well. And my mother hollered, come on, it's time to go, and she was up on the road. So I thought instead of walking around, I would swim across. Well, I started across, and when I got halfway, I got tired, and I thought that I could just stand up. But I couldn't. I went down. I sputtered and kicked and came back up to the top, and uh, I hollered for help, and my mother, who's a non-swimmer, saw that the boys were further over, and she hollered to them to come and take me out of this, you know, this swim, this deep hole. The next thing I remember is coming up through the water, seeing light, above the water with bubbles going up and I was held by someone. He took me to the shore and, and uh, put me onto the bank of the river and, and I was fine then. And this childhood incident has haunted Geraldine throughout her life and she's made sure that what happened to her would never happen to her son. There's Jason when he took his swimming lessons at the Y. We made a pact. I'd take lessons and he'd take lessons too. I knew the name of the boy who had saved me, and his name was Faxon McLaughlin. But I did not uh, really know who he was or what had happened to him. He was a little older than I was. Unfortunately, Geraldine never had the chance to find out, because shortly after he saved her life, Faxon moved away. Then, four years ago, Geraldine's mother received a surprise visitor. He just knocked on the door and he said that he always wondered what had ever happened I'm sorry, to the little girl whose life he had saved. I thought he had forgotten all about it and all about me. And after all these years, he wanted to know what happened to me. <laughs> and um, my mother, who was not well at that time, had forgotten to get his address, his phone number, just thought that he lived in Florida, but was not sure. And... Um, after my mother passed away, or before my mother passed away, she said, I want you to promise me that you will find him someday. And thank you. I'm sorry. After all this time and my mother passing away and everything, I saw on TV Thrill of a Lifetime. So I decided to email to see if they could find this boy who saved my life after all these years. And... Uh, I hope they can. <laughs> well, Geraldine, your hope is about to become a reality. Well, Geraldine, your fax machine is ringing. We don't have a fax machine. You do now. In the family room? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Thrill of a Lifetime has arranged for us to meet. I look forward to seeing you after all these years. Oh, my God. meet Christine Costa, a 28-year-old project manager who loves singing. She sings for her friends and family, but she's always had a secret dream. Hi, my name is Christine Costa, and my thrill of a lifetime would be to sing the national anthem at a Blue Jays game at Skydome. I've always been singing since I was pretty young, singing at weddings, singing at music festivals. Any chance that I got to sing, um, you know, I did it. Kept doing as often as I could. Um, 
A lot of times it would just be me in my room, shut the door, you know, put a tape on, and you know, I escape into my own, uh, to my own little, my own place, I guess. I'm originally from BC, and my immediate family still lives there. So my family uh, has been my friends since moving out to Ontario, for sure. And they're who I call and who I depend on for a lot of things. They've definitely uh, played a really important role in my life. So why so passionate about the national anthem? I love the anthem. It's a very just emotional song, I guess, and just seeing the crowd that everyone always gets so excited and just being a, a part of that would just be an amazing feeling. Well, take a deep breath, Christine, because we've arranged a test for you. If you make the cut, you'll be singing the national anthem at the Sky Dome, home of the Blue Jays, in front of 45,000 people. Sky Dome management will let you perform if you just pass the technical requirements. Christine has brought her friends along for support. Hi. Christine? Yes. Nice to meet you. I'm Rob. Well, welcome to Crunch, guys. Do you know why you're here today? Yeah, we're going to set you up in a booth in front of a microphone. We're going to record your voice in, in the proper studio, and uh, it's going to simulate what it's going to be like later at the baseball game when you're singing. So follow me. All right. This is Studio One, and the room that we're in now is called the Control Room, and this is where all the magic happens. That is where you're going to be. That's the actual studio floor. There's no way I can simulate with the crowd and the air and the, and the breeze and the smell of hot dogs and stuff. <laughs> um, but um, I can do my best to give you a little bit of a sense of what it's going to be like. Okay. All set? Yep. You ready? Yep. All right, let's do it. Okay, Christine, we're all set here. Whenever you're ready, you go right ahead. Oh, Canada. That whole experience was just really... It was a lot of fun because, I, you know, I felt like I was a uh, recording studio singer uh, in there recording something. I mean, it, for me, it was just practice, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Christine, how are you feeling? It's all right. I think I dropped down the lower key, and I preferred on the higher key, but no, it's just me. Singing to me is that reason for living, being able to express myself in other ways. I mean, work is work, but it's something to get out of that routine and out of kind of the normalness uh, that life can be. The word burst was a little bit poppy on the mic. Okay, Christine, that sounded really good. I think that's a wrap. <laughs> Christine passes the test with flying colors. Next stop, Sky Dome, in front of thousands of people. Coming up, Geraldine finally gets to meet her hero. Please, would you just bring him so that I can meet him because I'm getting very nervous. <laughs> and Christine gets the help of a surprise coach to prepare for her performance. Hi. Hi. I thought I nice to meet you. you. 40 years ago, a stranger saved Geraldine's life. We were able to track him down, and we've brought him all the way from Florida to meet Geraldine face to face. An anxious Geraldine arrives at their rendezvous a little early. I don't remember thanking him or anything, and, and I've always wondered what happened with him. Every time that I would go swimming, or we would take our sons to go swimming, all of that would come back again. And I think, well, I wonder where he is now. My name is Faxon McLaughlin, and uh, about 40 years ago, I saved a little girl from drowning. Her mother hollered, and if I remember serves me correctly, she said, my baby, my baby. And all I saw was a small girl's hand, or a child's hand. I didn't even think about it. Uh, I was there with my friends, and I made one run and, and dove into the water, and swam a small ways and I got to where the child was. She was lying at the time right flat on the bottom of the uh, river and I picked her up and then I swam to the surface. I can remember that very vividly because I mean, you know, that's something that kind of is a burning thing in your memory. Boy, it was right to mom right off quick, I want to tell you. And then her and her mother went up went up to the bank and I'd never seen them again.
Um, there are times when I have thought how lucky I am to be alive and how um, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the wonderful husband that I do. I wouldn't have the two sons that I do that I just adore. And uh, I wouldn't have the life that I've had. I flash back and I keep wondering from time to time, wonder what happened to the little girl. I couldn't even remember her name. Well, I never knew her name. And you take that one split second, and I wonder what happened to the little girl. I wonder where she is. I wonder if she's doing well. I know that thank you is not enough, but I would just like him to know that he has just made my life so wonderful just by saving my life in order for me to be here. I want to meet him, please. Would you just bring him so that I can meet him because I'm getting very nervous. <laughs> very nervous. Here we are, 40 odd years later, and we're here to finally make a little girl's wish come true. I can't wait to meet the young lady. Well, your 40 year wait is over. Meanwhile, Christine has her own case of nerves to deal with before she sings at Skydome. I am feeling a little bit nervous. Um, try not to think about it too much. I don't want to soak myself out. I guess the, the biggest moment that I want out of it is, is at the end and getting everyone all riled up ready for the game and, uh, you know, cheering and all, you know, excited to be there. When I walked through the door, first thing I saw was the limo. Unbeknownst to Christine, hidden in the limousine, is a celebrity that would be me. I'm here to help coach her and make her thrill of a lifetime even more of a thrill. Amy Skye is not only a renowned recording artist, but she's also sung the national anthem at major sporting events. Hi. Hi. I thought I heard nice to meet you. you. I understand you are on your way to sing the anthem yes, of the Sky Dome. I am. Well, how'd you like a few tips? Yes, I'd love some. Okay. <laughs> what are you worried most about, about singing at the Sky Dome? I, I, I try to really focus just on the song and, you know, forget about the people, because I guess that's the unnerving part, too, just seeing everyone. And Yeah. I find it's good to focus your eyes lightly on a point. You just want to look like you're having a great time. Right. And That's smiling, what, I guess. Yeah. And... Sometimes you plant that mic on a stand, you clasp your hands lightly behind your back, and you just plant your feet, and you just yeah, project. I thought I was just going to be in a cab going down to, down to Sky Dome. This is great. Amy has one last piece of advice for Christine from her favorite power. poet, yeah. Maya Angelou. And you know, she says, pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. Because I say, it's in the fire of my eyes, it's the flash of my teeth, it's the swing of my waist, and the joy in my feet. As we started to pull up to Sky Dome, that's where it really started to hit. You know, the, the whole part of the thrill started to really crash down, I guess. <laughs> Now are you nervous now that you can see it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, don't be nervous. It's going to be the thrill of a lifetime. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you think you're nervous now, Christine? Wait till you step onto the field. Coming up, Christine gets ready to hit it out of the park. Please rise and join Christine Costa singing of the National Anthem. And later, Geraldine meets the man to whom she owes her life. Christine has arrived at the Sky Dome, where she has to sing the national anthem before the largest live audience in the country. Well, here we are. <laughs> hey, this is it. Time to go. The show must go on. <laughs> Christine is making her way down the same hallway as previous anthem singers, such as Brian Adams, Aretha Franklin, and the Bare Naked Ladies. Will she perform up to their standards? Welcome to Sky Dome. Are you ready to start your thrill? Yes, I think so. Okay, let's go. So as soon as I got to Sky Dome, it was a flurry of events. I was trying to keep calm and just trying to soak in the moment at the same time because I knew at this point it was going to just go really fast. I just need you to sign in at security. 
my main focus was, okay, what do I do? When do I get the mic? You know, uh, and all of that. And you know, they took us down uh, to the dugout. You're going to be standing between the pitcher's mound and second base. We walked through and ended up in the, the media booth, I guess what they call it. And it was surreal to be backstage, but really neat, too, because you just have players walking by you like there's nothing, and they're stretching in front of you, and I was trying to soak that all in, but at the same time, you know, I was being told, okay, you've got 20 minutes, you know, and it just kept counting down, so I was like, okay, I better just, you know, concentrate on what I have to do here. I guess it wasn't even five minutes to go. I mean, I was told, okay, five minutes, and I mean, that five minutes just flew by. And then all of a sudden, okay, it's time to go, and I mean, it happened so quickly. And I mean, my, my walk across the field with the mascot, and I had my friends, like, cheering. I could hear them, I could see them. I mean, that was amazing. And, and I thought, okay, this is, uh, this is it. You know, gotta do, do my thing. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join from the TV show Thrill of a Lifetime, fulfilling her thrill, Christine Pasta, singing of the national anthem. Singing in front of my friends, my close friends, just added that bit of nervousness, and I wanted things to be perfect, and I wanted things to go go on without a hitch. I didn't want to forget the words. I didn't want to trip. You know, I just was more conscious of all all of these things. When when I sang, that's when it really came alive for me. That's when I was like, okay, you know, I better not uh, lose my composure here and start crying. After I finished singing, it was a very huge sigh of relief. You know, as much as I would have wanted to go back and sing more, but it was a huge sigh of relief. You know, I got through, I, I, I sang all the words properly, you know, everything went well. Singing the anthem was definitely, for me, a thrill of a lifetime because it's something that I wanted to do since I was a little girl. And it was a, an emotional experience and it was a fulfilling experience and uh, one that I'll remember forever. Coming up, can the hero from Geraldine's past live up to her powerful memory? Geraldine and Faxon haven't seen one another since he rescued her from drowning more than 40 years ago. When I was in the restaurant and waiting for Faxon to come, I was nervous, I was excited, I was wondering what he'd think of me, I was wondering what he was like. I was very, very nervous at meeting him. was gone as soon as I saw him because I just looked into his eyes and into his face and I just saw the sweetest, dearest, kindest man. It was instant that we were friends, we were, um, we had an incredible bond. So how are you been? Oh, I'm doing good, I'm doing fantastic. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you, I'm so glad you could come. I no problem. I had, a, I had a come earlier, but I didn't know where you were. I know. I know. I had no idea. My recollection of the actual meeting was, was very, very faint. I don't ever remember seeing you after that. No. Nope, I never did. No, I know. And it's now 40 some years. Oh, thank you so much. I wouldn't even be here without you. Oh. Well, you're safe and sound now. <laughs> I know. Oh, my gosh. Well, tell me about yourself. I... 
Well, can we sit down? Shall we sit down? Shall we? <laughs> Should I give him my phone? Can you... When I was sitting across the table from him, just after we met, I thought, he is an amazing man. He risked his life to save me. Truly one of a kind. He is definitely my hero. This is Miss Joyce, my fiance. After Fax and I had a few minutes alone together, we introduced my husband, Cal, and his fiance, Joyce. To commemorate this moment, Geraldine offers Faxon a gift. It has today's date, one has oh your name, word. and, one, and has one has my oh name. Oh my word. So when you use them, you can think of me. I, I wrote you a little letter that you can open from time to time. Oh, it says, hi Geraldine, just a note to say hello again, because we will have met when you read this. A long time has passed since you were a very small girl and I was a very young man. And over the years, I often wondered whatever happened to you. It is wonderful what turn of events passed before our eyes and in our hearts and from how our lives affect one another. Well, that is so beautiful. Thank you so much. I want to thank Thrill of a Lifetime for this amazing dream come true. You have found the boy who saved my life and who will now be a friend in my heart forever. I made a promise to my mother that someday I would find him. And mom, I have. Tell us your thrill and we will make it happen. Go to thrillofalifetime.ca very, very memorable day. A long friendship. And thank you both.